Today we are going to be talking about how we can merge two different displacement map in one shader. This was actually a request by someone in the comment section who said how we can add two displacement shader. So we'll see how we can do that with Arnold and Maya. So I'm going to take a simple plane for the demonstration. I'm going to scale this up, bring this up. Alright, so this will be my base and I'm going to make some about 100 subdivision and 100. You can keep it to 10 if you want. You can add uh, more subdivision with the procedural method which you have right here and if you scroll down you can see subdivision type and here you can add more which we'll get into later on so we have this I'm gonna right click and add a new material stand surface let's call this maybe ground let's make the weight 1 and color to maybe a bit grey let's make the roughness to 0.4 Alright, so we have a simple shader and a simple plane. Let's go to our hyper shade and let's tweak this. So I click on your ground and go to the arc network. Now with this, I'm gonna close this down, bring this right about here. So here you'll see displacement shader, which is completely empty. We are going to add a displacement here. So I'm gonna go to Arnold and take maybe a noise. And let's make the octave to one. Octave basically is the overall quality of a noise. And amplitude is the strength. I'm gonna increase the amplitude. Lacuna artisanized details and maybe some distortion. Let's make the scale to somewhere about 2, 2, and 2. This looks pretty good. Um, okay. And I'm going to attach this to the displacement. All right. So if I go back and let's maybe take a light to see what's going on and run my IPR, you'll see that we have a very distorted looking plane. So the reason is because. Um, the display if you go down to the shape plane shape Arnold and displacement attribute you'll notice that the value of height is 1 which is too much I'm going to make it 0.1 and if I run my IPR again now we have much reasonable displacement going on so this looks pretty good now there are a couple of things like here you'll see some rigidness rigid polys and the reason is because we don't have enough uh, subdivision in our plane to calculate that to create a smooth mesh so what you can do is we can add a procedural subdivision instead of adding it directly onto your plane we can add procedurally by using Arnold's subdivision method so you have two methods Cataclark and linear Cataclark add more of a smooth subdivision and linear makes a kind of a hard subdivision so I'm gonna choose Cataclark and now you will see something like this you can also go for linear whatever suits you I'm gonna I think I'm gonna switch to maybe Cataclark and I'm gonna make the iteration to two Iteration basically stands for more higher details, more subdivision. So the more amount of iteration you increase, the more amount of subdivision you are adding. Alright, so this looks pretty good now. So this is our first displacement. We have nice canyon rock looking scene going on. So I'm going to pause this. Let's close this. Let's go to the hyper sheet. So we have first displacement. Now we can add more. So I'm going to go to Arnold. You can choose anything else you want. Like maybe let's take a different thing. Let's take maybe a noise. Instead of uh, that noise, I'm going to take this noise here, or maybe something else like simplex, or let's maybe take a simple ramp. Let's get creative. So, this is our ramp, and instead, I'm going to make this circular and let's actually invert this to something like this. All right, so if I attach this to the displacement here and run my PR. You'll notice that we have nice procedural displacement going on of this circle. Now how we can combine both of these? I'm gonna call this big rock. Let's call this circle. So what you can do is you can come up here to the Arnold section and you can search for multiply. And here you'll find AI multiply. Just take the node, attach your input one, attach your input two, and attach this to the displacement. So now sometimes IPR has trouble firing up the scene so you can simply close the Arnold render view go back here and now just hit a refresh to see the multiply and disconnect this and now you'll have something like this. So what multiply is doing is it's taking the input 1 into and multiplying it. You can also experiment with this with a different node which I'll show you in a bit. But let's attach this to the displacement and see the output. So now you can see we have a pretty interesting scene here. We have our circle multiplying with the overall canyons and you can't see anything beyond the circle only inside of the circle which creates a pretty nice looking scene. 
So this is how you can multiply two shaders. What you can also do is if you invert this, let's say if you attach this to the input one and this to the input two, let's disconnect this, you'll get a different kind of result. And maybe attaching this again. And let's see. So not much of a difference, but what you can do is I'm gonna get rid of the multiply. And in the search bar, I'm going to search for add, an AI add. And this is all of these are just mathematical nodes. What you can do is you can attach the same thing again. And instead of multiplying, what this will do is just add up both of these. So if I run this, uh, make sure your IPR is closed. So now you'll see that it's trying to blend both the noises. So here you have noise, circle noise, and then here you have big rock noise. And then it's trying to blend both of these noise. So if I attach this to the displacement, and look at the scene here you can see that we are getting displacement from both of them a pretty unique looking displacement unique looking scene because here you can see we get upper sphere as well the circle that we created we can see the elevated circle and the bottom circle as well so it's generating two ways circle so pretty interesting looking and you can add more details to it you can keep adding more details to it if you add some more cara clock here it will take more time to render the scene, but yes, you will get much better result. So I'm going to keep it to 2 and let's stop this, close this. So let's try something else. Maybe you can search for subtract. And let's add, subtract this circle 1 from big rock and delete this. And now here you'll see something different. So if I attach this again to the displacement and go back, play this and let's update the full scene all right we don't see much of a difference honestly but yeah i guess it did something so i'm gonna open up my hyper shade maybe like changing the shade of one and two i've honestly never used the subtract node i usually go with multiply that does the job all right so there you go so now you have a opposite scene of add now you have something like this so this is pretty amazing to create your scene and if you think the displacement height is too much what you can do is come here and 0 0.05 you can reduce the value and you'll have less displacement going on i'm gonna add a bit more it is fine for me uh, and similarly like this you have lots of different nodes that you can use to add your noises you can also use a mix shader you can take a lot of different stuff you can uh, take a layer shader then you can use AI add and uh, then you can also use divide I think we didn't use divide and uh, there you go it has something crazy going on um, then we already use multiply so you can use uh, the mathematical nodes which is there in Maya in Arnold to generate this kind of uh, unique patterns so I'm gonna attach this to here alright so there you go something crazy is uh, definitely going on with this type of shader because um, the amount of color that it contains understands how the deep the displacement is going to be so again you can uh, use a lot of different nodes uh, with this type of node uh, particularly speaking what it does is uh, the more amount of color value that's there will impact how much displacement there's going to be if you have more black value it will push more downwards if you have more white value it will push more upwards so you can experiment a lot of different thing with this there's a lot of different noises here you can also use cell noise if you want um, you can increase octaves and uh, like an RT and add the amplitude values and uh, let's take maybe something like a cell yeah and there you go so you can play around with this type of noise as well so play around with the different noises to see what you can come up with there are a lot of different variations that you can do and instead of using more subdivision on plane you can use it directly with the subdivision so this is how you can combine two different displacements have fun with this try something unique out of it and that's it for this one i'll see you in the next video